Good morning, New Life, and welcome to our Sunday service. I'm your host, Donna. And I'm India. Here at New Life, we believe in Colossians 4 and 5. Teaching people to walk in wisdom. Towards them that are without, redeeming the times. Our service time is at 11.30, but from 11 to 11.30, we have... Fellowship! <laughs> and this is an opportunity for you to get to know your neighbor. To all our first time visitors, hi, we see you. Please take the opportunity to fill out the visitor's card and place it in the offering basket. And here's a look at what's happening for both you and your family throughout the week. Greetings, family and friends. I'm Lawrence D. Coles, Jr., and I'm the lead pastor of New Life International Ministries. We're in Jamaica, Queens. Right now, I think we're in some trying, trying times right now. Coronavirus. We don't know where, the, we don't know where it's going to take us. But God gave me a message in the beginning of the year, and it speaks on faith. And that's what we need, faith. We need faith. So in actuality, the actual principle he gave me was don't allow this fixed outcome to take you to a place of desolation or defeat. So what are you trying to say? I'm trying to say that in this season that we're in, when you don't understand exactly what we're facing, that's when you got to get to know God. And you got to get to know God through his word, through worship, and prayer and most of all you've got to have faith so I ask you everyone that's online come with me as we go into the presence of the King God bless good morning everybody we want to welcome you to the new life worship experience so I know that you're in your homes but let's just begin to stand on our feet let's just begin to speak well of an awesome dad that we serve God you are holy you are magnificent and you are wonderful
we have to remember where we stand. We have to remember who we stand on. On Christ the solid rock, I stand. All other places are seeking sand in because I stand in Christ. And like how, how Tasha spoke about last Sunday, because I am in him and he is on me. The river of life flows. There's a flowing of life. There's a flowing of life. There's a flowing of peace. It's flowing inside of me. And it's inside of you. It's inside of you. Speak. 
Good afternoon, New Life. Good afternoon, families and friends, and welcome to the last Sunday of Women's History Month. The women of the ministry have brought forth great messages this month. We heard about the posture of your heart, being prepared, and putting on your holy armor of God. After we have done all of this, what do we do next? Now we must find our strength in the Lord. But how do we do that? The next step, and possibly the most important step, is to admit that you need help. This, for many people, including myself, is going to be the hardest part. Surrendering control over a situation means you have to be willing to literally let go. Let go of your pride, let go of your ego, let go of your expectations, how you think things should be done, let go of your fixed outcomes, what you want the resolution to be. You have to let go. In the Bible, Paul prays for deliverance from a demonic spirit sent by Satan to harass him. When he prayed to God about it, this was the reply he received. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 through 10. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Therefore, mostly, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Yes. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Let's talk about the first part of the scripture. His grace is sufficient for you. Let me say that again. His grace is sufficient for you. The word grace means courteous goodwill. <clears throat> the word sufficient means enough, adequate. 
That means stop looking. You have found your safe place within the Lord, and he is providing you with courteous goodwill, which will be adequate for whatever you may need. The second part of the scripture speaks about boasting. I will rather boast in my infirmities. How many of us can find joy in boasting in our failures? I can honestly say I have a hard time boasting about my failures. We want to boast about things that we feel like are right in our life. We want to boast about promotions that we just got, about, got at our jobs. We want to boast about our children graduating from high school or from college. How about, I just lost my job. Can you boast in that? How about, my child just got left back. You want me to boast about that? I'll even take it a step further. How about, I just got diagnosed with an incurable disease. Can you boast about that? Who are we to decide what life events should be boasted about when we don't know the plans of the Lord? His ways are not like our ways. We can't do it on our own. Just like in the game of basketball, we can easily identify the star players on the team. The Jordans, the LeBrons, the Hardings. We can recognize who they are. We see them on TV, we see them in commercials, we admire them. When it's time to play, all the other players on the team know that they must fall back and play their position and let the star player make the game-winning shot. Yes. They surrender control and they have faith. Our star player is Jesus. We have the ultimate six man. Are you going to let him in the game? Mm -hmm. The last part of the scripture reads, for when I am weak, then I am strong. So in order to be strong, I must first be weak. Yes. Yes. I must first be placed in a situation where I am made weak. Yes. That means I'm going to be uncomfortable. That means things aren't going to be the way I want them to look or the way I want them to feel. And in that space, I'm going to have to surrender and let go. And when you surrender, stop worrying and start boasting in your infirmities, there are going to be some onlookers, some people who will call you a fool. Yes. My Caribbean friends and family have this saying, they say, God takes care of babies and fools. <laughs> but why? Because babies and fools don't struggle with releasing control. Mm. Babies and fools simply rely. I have a theory. I want y'all to work with me, okay? Just hear me out on this. This is for the parents or who's ever spent time with a child. So that's basically everyone. Okay. As a parent, you learn little tricks to get you through your everyday routines. One of the tricks that I've learned is that I never tell my kids where we're going. I give the instructions like get dressed, pack your bag, get a snack, go to the bathroom. No, you can't wear shorts in November. These kinds of things. <laughs> but I never tell them where we are going. I find that when I give them that information, that's when I get the most resistance. Questions like, do we have to go? Why haven't we left already? How long is the drive? Who's going to be there? These are all very important questions to children. <laughs> and us as parents who are simply trying to get out the door, we don't want to answer all of these questions, especially if we're running late. <laughs> Then if the plan changes, and you know sometimes life happens and plans change, then you have to explain to them why the plans changed and what the new plans are. This can be exhausting. So to avoid all of this, I simply never tell them where we are going. 
This is reminiscent of another story, the story of the Jews. Moses freed the people and the children of Israel and explained that they were going to the promised land. For 40 years, they walked around in the wilderness because of their unbelief, their resistance, their inability to let go and surrender. Moses, their leader, never even made it into the promised land. When I reflect on that, I can honestly say, Father, don't tell me where we're going. I don't want to spend 40 years trying to enter into what you have promised to me. Keep me in the dark. I don't want to resist. Have your way, Father. I let go and I surrender. For most of us, our normal routines have been turned upside down by the coronavirus. I challenge you to see the good amongst the chaos. This is a new environment for all most of us. So I encourage you to use this as an opportunity to assume a childlike posture in a new environment, not knowing which direction you are headed. Find comfort in knowing that the Father, the Lord, the creator of the universe has got your back. Isaiah 40, 28 reads like this. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faint nor is weary. He is underst his understanding is unsearchable. For the kids out there, yes, better than Alexis. Isaiah 40, 30 to 31 reads, Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The next step is to wait on the Lord. And while you are waiting, remember to wait with a childlike posture. Wait like you're expecting the greatest gift that you have ever received. Wait like it's Christmas morning and remember you will be renewed. The word renewed means to resume after interruption. You guys know like when you're watching Netflix a long time and they ask you if you wanna keep watching, we need to keep watching even after interruption. Keep your eyes fixed on the Lord of Lords. Will you resume after the interruption? Will you allow your star player, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings to, be, to intercede on your behalf? Think about it like this. We blindly put our faith and trust without resistance in people, mere people every day. We trust that the Uber driver is going to get us to our destination safely, no resistance. We trust that our washing machine is going to clean our clothes, no resistance. We even trust that our order will be correct when we receive it from the pickup window. Maybe a little bit of resistance. <laughs> so why can't we put our trust in our Lord and Savior the same way? I encourage you today to just let go once we let go, then we can rejoice. I challenge you to find your joy in every situation because joy is not dependent on circumstances. We can have joy in the midst of chaos. I guarantee you that there is almost always something to rejoice about in your life. Did you wake up this morning? Then God is not finished with you. So I encourage you to dance like David through the storms, trust in the Lord like a baby or a fool, surrender it all to him and let go. I hope that this message touched you in some way. And if you are one of the people who feel like you find it hard to surrender and let go, I would like to pray with you and for you at this time. 
If you feel more comfortable, you can bow your head, or close your eyes. I know that's how I feel comfortable. It's, it's, it's an open invitation. <clears throat> Father, we humbly come to you in our hour of need to say that we are weak and we are vulnerable. We need your help, Lord. We need your help to surrender and resume. We need your help in trust. We need to know that you will be there to catch us when we fall. Lord, break down every wall, every barrier that hinder us, hinders us from coming to you, Father, for you know the plans, you know the way. Father, we hope that you will supply all of our needs and our strength in this time of chaos. We hope that you will see us even in the darkness. We pray that you will guide us and lead us and take away all fear that we might have in a world that's telling us that we should be fearful. But you are our Lord, our King of Kings, and we put our faith and our trust in you because you know the plans that we do not. We come before you a broken and remorseful people, and we ask for forgiveness, and we ask for your strength. Strengthen us and guide us toward the promises that you have for us. We ask these things and more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hello, family and friends. Wasn't that a great word? Uh, that was our sister, Dornay Burwell. She brought a great word about letting go, relinquishing power. I think in these days and times, we've got to relinquish our power and give it to the Most High. Amen. Uh, we finished our uh, Women's Month, which was each woman got up to bring a word, you know, for the month of March. And uh, hope to see you next week.